Good afternoon, everyone from Dunrovin Ranch in Lola, Montana. What a grand day it is. Um, first of all, we have our special guest, Kate Dunn. Everybody knows Kate um, from her association with James. And actually, Kate, you brought both of you out here, did you not? Uh, uh, yes. Yes, I did. You mean in the very beginning? Yes, in the very oh, yeah. beginning. In the very beginning. So, yeah, um, I was the first one that came out here um, to the ranch. Gosh, that must have been six or seven years ago, maybe. Yeah, I think maybe so. More. And yeah. uh, I was interested in horseback riding lessons and you informed me about what you were doing with Days at Dunrovin and the ranch cams. And it just so happened that my husband James was starting his own live streaming business at that time. And I came home from my visit with you and I said, have you heard about this ranch down in Lolo doing live streaming? And, uh, and I believe he gave you a call not long after that. And that's how that relationship started. Yeah. I, and I'm very glad you did that. I'm very glad to have both of you in my life and in the, the life of Days at Dunrowan. And I thank you both for your talents. For those of you who don't know, uh, Kate is our illustrator and our voice channeler of the Donkey Divas. Now, you've enjoyed those divas, have you not, Kate? Oh, they're impossible not to enjoy. I mean, they're both, <laughs> they both have such unique personalities. It doesn't take long spending time with them to to see that personality come out. Gertie, of course, shows you right away. Maud right. takes a little longer, but um, but they're both just wonderful creatures and and it's been fun to get to know them and try to channel their thoughts through the, the Divas cartoons. So yeah. that's been a fun challenge for sure. Well, I think you're most talented in all of that. I really appreciate it. And of course, today is a very exciting day because we yes. have welcomed Her Royal Highness Harriet back. That's and right. Yeah, very excited to have her back. Uh, but today I diverge a little bit because uh, Kate has been taking morning walks in much the same way that I have been doing for years. And unlike me, she actually has some talent with a with a camera. <laughs> and she's been taking some terrific photos and she's offered to share some with us. So I'm gonna turn the, the show over to you, Kate. Maybe you can walk us through some of the birds that you, um, and animals that you've captured with your photo, uh, with your camera around the Robin. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks, Suzanne, and thanks everyone at home for tuning in. Seems that this broadcast is pretty fitting to talk about the birds of Dunrovin now that Harriet is back. Um, so, yeah, I guess most of these photos we're going to be looking at today, I've taken over the last two to three weeks. Um, Buna and I, Buna's our puppy, she's uh, almost seven months old now, and she's definitely been a great motivator to get outside every morning and go for a long walk. And we often go and do the same loop down on the state land that adjoins the ranch and runs right up to the Bitterroot River. And uh, so I take my camera with me almost every morning because there's something new to see every day. And particularly at this time of year with spring slowly coming, although there was some snow out there a little earlier. <laughs> Um, but we have residents coming back, all kinds of wildlife coming back to life. So, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely been a lot of fun to go see the changes all around and uh, get some good captures of some of our, our local bird life. So let's get started here. Um, this first photo on our headline here is a red-tailed hawk soaring above the clouds there. And we'll see more of these later. Of course, we have a few residents around here that that Suzanne can tell us more about when we get to those photos. So let's take a look at some of the signs of spring here. Um, I think the red-winged blackbird is one of the, maybe one of the first spring residents we, we get back here at the ranch and they certainly make their presence known, don't they Suzanne? They're, they're oh, I love their, their, their sound, their trill, yeah. yes. Yes, yeah. And they, they seem to like to gather in, in rather large groups all around the riparian and just chatter at one another. So it's, it's quite a raucous affair, but it's really a, a sign of spring. And they're often associated with those cattail marshes. They, they seem to hear yeah. as well, yeah. Yeah. 
And then this little guy, um, I've identified as a hairy woodpecker. And it was a little bit of a trick because we also have downy woodpeckers in this area and they look very similar. Um, but I decided hairy woodpecker was the right call on this one because of the longer bill. Uh, this is also a female. Uh, so the males would have a red patch on the back of their head. Um, the hairy woodpecker is also a little larger than the downy, um, but I asked Suzanne about this just a few minutes ago before the broadcast, and she said that we do see both varieties around the ranch. So They're wonderful, yep. Yeah. Commonly at the suet feeders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this was a little sparrow I captured uh, by the river the other day, and I was just looking it up earlier this morning to see if I could ID it. And I think it's a song sparrow, but if anyone knows uh, what it might be, um, please chime in and let us know in the comments. Um, there's so many different varieties of sparrow, and I'm rather bad at, at identifying them all, so. I would agree with you, Kate, that it's a yeah. song sparrow, but I, I, I'm not a bird expert either, particularly among the small, what we call dicky birds, the, the, the small dicky. brownish birds. Uh -huh. And then uh, this is a bald eagle. It's a little hard to see because it's flying away from us towards the Sapphire Mountains in the background. I didn't get a great picture of the bald eagle this day, but there is one or a couple that I see every so often down by the river. Um, this day in particular, uh, it was being chased by three magpies and um, the action was happening so quickly, I didn't get my camera pulled out fast enough um, to watch the magpies attacking the eagle. But this was when he finally got away from them and uh, he flew a little south along the Bitterroot. And then you can see him here just landing in the top of a tree there and, and he just hung out there and took a break from from the magpies for a bit. But it seems like we do have a couple at least that that like to hang out along the river. Uh, when I used to ride my horse more, I would ride right uh, up river to join my neighbor who lives a mile up river. And because the river is a, a public property, I could ride my horse in the river to get from my property to hers. Mm -hmm. And there was an eagle's nest and I'll bet it's still active. Uh, uh -huh. And it was right along the river, about uh, a little bit more than a mile uh, uh, south of us, upriver from us. And okay. we've had eagles in the area for oh, a very long time. Um, and I don't know if you remember, but last winter when uh, a calf was stillborn in our neighbor's pasture, we ended up with, I think there were five or six eagles in the trees that were gathered around you know, as scavengers. So they're yeah. definitely out and about. Mm -hmm. I do remember that, yeah. Okay, and now the Northern Flicker. This one is one of my favorite birds around the ranch and they seem to be year round residents. Is that right, Suzanne? Absolutely, yeah. I call them Mr. Fiddle, Mr. Fiddlehead. I like him. <laughs> I really like the flickers, they're so beautiful. They're so beautiful, yeah, yeah. they're gorgeous. Um, and they're quite large, if, if you've never seen one, they're, they're actually a member of the woodpecker family. And I think they're only second in size to the pileated woodpecker. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're quite a large bird. Um, and they're loud. And they're loud, <laughs> <laughs> they are loud. But look at how beautiful, I mean, just a gorgeous bird. That. And then they have this bright orange under feathers. There you go. You got they some do. under feathers. Beautiful. Yeah, you can see a little bit on the tail here. Um, so we in in the Western U.S. This is the red shafted variety, and that's what we have over here on the East Coast. Folks over there will see the yellow shafted variety. So almost the same look, but they'll have those yellow feathers under the tail and wing rather than red. And uh, now this is a series of shots that was taken just off of my deck here at the ranch. And this is the this is a male and female flicker doing their mating ritual. And it happens very quickly. They do these little head bobs and sways from side to side. And then they take a break and they kind of close their eyes and blink slowly. And then they very quickly start bobbing and swaying again. And they do this over and over. Uh, so it's oh, quite wonderful. a, what a, quite great a wonderful thing to see. Yeah. yeah. 
and they fly around quite a bit and will do this from tree to tree and they just chase each other around. So even though there are no leaves on the trees yet, there's definitely spring fever here at the ranch. So. <laughs> Okay, bye nice flickers. Photos. Really <laughs> nice. Oh, great. And there you can see you can see a little more of that red as they fly around. So. And this is the great blue heron, such a beautiful, beautiful bird. Um, I haven't gotten many photos yet. This is my one good one I have, mostly because Boona's found out where they like to hang out in the marsh. <laughs> and <laughs> she she usually gets there before I do. And um, if you have read the blog post I wrote recently about um, going down to the marshes with Buna, she likes to rouse them every morning and they rise up with just this unearthly call. It really sounds like a dinosaur and they, they take off very quickly. So um, I've yet to get some, some more photos of them, but they're just gorgeous birds and they really do look like dinosaurs flying overhead. Be sure to keep your eye open for where they might be roosting because they might be nesting there True. as well. Yeah, and they do roost in the trees, nest in the trees. Okay. Now onto the sandhill cranes, some beautiful um, visitors to the ranch. And I would love if they stuck around. Um, I was curious to know, Suzanne, from you, are they, are they full-time summer visitors or do they just come and then move through? No, there's a pair that has been nesting there for some years. Okay. And this particular marsh is just a wonderful little piece of all of that uh, ground, isn't it? I mean, you can see that there's plenty of water there, and it just attracts a lot of different uh, birds. But uh, for about uh, the first 10 years that we were here, we had a pair that nested there every year, and then they disappeared. But during the last five years, we've had a pair that nests there every year. And I think the summer before we, we saw several chicks that they had raised. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Yeah. So That's a really I, nice composition, by the way, uh, Kate. I really like the colors there. The, the yeah. Really beautiful colors of the grass and the herons. You can see how they just blend right in. It's really beautiful. Yeah, they were, they were tricky to spot when I first went down because they're so long and reedy themselves. They almost blend in with the cattails until you start to look for that red cap. And once you see that, you can kind of train your eye to keep looking for it again. Mm -hmm. um, and so I believe the next photo is Buna. Yep, here she is. And <laughs> this, the reason I'm including this in the Sand Hill Crane series we're about to look at is because this is what James has to do with Buna whenever we get in Sand Hill Crane territory and Kate <laughs> wants to get some photos. <laughs> <laughs> because she will take off after them and ruin any chance I have of getting a good photo. So James has uh, gotten accustomed to just scooping her up and she's pretty content to be held for a little while anyway. Yeah. She, what a beautiful face she has. Oh, doesn't she? I know. Yeah. I've put a lot more photos of Buna in here at the end, so we'll get a little bit more of that cute puppy. So, um, yeah, I went down to the marsh. This was the blog, again, from the blog post I wrote um, about a couple weekends ago when James was uh, doing the ranch cam replacal. Um, and I went down to the marsh looking for the sandhill cranes, and I just had a wonderful display. Uh, this was actually a third crane, the, the next set of photos you'll see, that flew in overhead above the couple that was down in the marsh. And um, the couple down in the marsh honked at him relentlessly and he honked back at them. Um, but it was pretty amusing to see the display. And I love this series here because this is him. This is how a crane makes a sharp turn in the air. And he almost <laughs> looks like a, almost looks like a marionette. You know, it doesn't quite look real to me yeah. when I see the photos. Yeah. And here oh, he is coming in overhead. Yeah, gorgeous. Oh, another good one. So he was he was right over top of me. Beautiful. They're magnificent and they have a wonderful call as well. Mm -hmm. A real cackle. Yeah. And then he circled around and he came back again. He couldn't could, couldn't get enough, I think. I think he was checking out the marsh for his own his own mating purposes, nesting purposes perhaps. It was a beautiful day. The clouds were gorgeous. The light was just right. And so here's one of our uh, couples down uh, 
Now this is rather close to the ranch. Um, you may recognize this spot, Suzanne. I recognize the gate for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my gate. That's your gate. That's oh, right. Yeah, all those, all the gates on the state land are mine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so this was Boona and I were coming back from our walk in the morning, and they happened to be right on our return path. There, you can see the trail on the right side of the frame, mm -hmm. and um, this is Boona. She found something to gnaw on out there. <laughs> and this is her watching the sandhill cranes. But she actually didn't chase after them right away. She was happy enough to just kind of watch them for a bit. So I was able to get some great photos of them. And this, I'm not certain, but I think this is the male of the pair um, because he's larger. And he started doing this leaping dance uh, when I got a little closer. And I know that the sandhill cranes do a, a rather elaborate leap being dance when they're courting each other, but this seemed to be almost a defensive maneuver, like to show to me how big he was and, you know, to get away from his territory, so. Well, they are fierce. Um, I was talking with Hobie Hare when he was here recently, and he was telling us about a, a, a time that he saw a, a great uh, a sandhill crane chase down a grizzly bear in, in Yellowstone Park. They put their wings out and they make themselves big and make a lot of racket, and they can, they can defend their territory very effectively. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I would not want to mess with that beak. I mean, that just looks like a weapon. <laughs> Yeah, or those wings. Or the wings, yeah. But they are beautiful birds, and I love their eyes, those orange eyes that, yeah. that glow. Yeah. 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 And they're so quiet when they walk. They walk mm. stealthily. So now on to uh, red-tailed hawks. And there seem to be quite a number around the ranch. Um, but we're going to be looking at one one particular pair. This guy, I've seen him, him or her on their own quite a bit. It seems to be a bachelor or bachelorette hanging around the ranch. And uh, this particular one was watching Boona very closely, I think trying to weigh out whether she was small enough or big enough to be picked up. I'm not sure, but they definitely took an interest in Boona. Um, so here's a nice um, below shot just to show you kind of the classic silhouette of the red-tailed hawk. Very broad wings and that reddish, brownish red tail and the, the dark wingtips and the barred feathers. Um, pretty classic uh, bird silhouette. And of course, they're the most abundant raptor across, uh, oh gosh, most of the United States, if not if not globally, they're they're pretty pretty a uh, frequent visitor to most parts, and they too have a very distinctive call. They do. And you hear it frequently when you hike or walk. You can hear it up there. Yeah, it's kind of that that classic raptor call. Um, I've seen it used wrong in movies. They'll use the red-tailed hawk call for an eagle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so impressive, you know, it's that classic, right. uh, yeah, call that we all think of when we see an eagle, but it's actually the red-tailed hawk. Yeah. And so the one we're going to be looking at in particular here is um, a frequent visitor. Yes. This one with, with the rather unusual uh, barring and, and colors going on and... Uh, you, you've told me, Suzanne, that, that this particular hawk has been around for some time. Yes, it's, it's lucidic, which means that it's uh, lacking color, almost like an albino. And um, he, I've seen him for about three or four years now. And um, I, I think it's getting closer in the sense that it, um, it spends more time around the ranch this year than it has in past years. It's a beautiful bird. Gorgeous. It really is. And and the first time I saw it, um, I saw it perched on the top of a tree. And you can see that red and dark barring on the outside as well. So, so even when it has its wings folded, um, you can see that different coloration going on. And I had no idea what it was. I thought it must be some different kind of hawk, even though I could see some red in its tail when it flew off. Um, mm -hmm. 
but yeah, it's it's just missing some pigment there. So it's still a red tail. And here it is uh, coming in to play with its mate, um, a rather, rather darker red-tailed hawk. Um, but these two were just cavorting and reeling above the, the Bitterroot River when I was down there uh, about a week ago taking these photos, really having quite a lot of fun. Um, and since then, I've seen them flying above the riparian, and they kind of go everywhere together. Yeah, I saw them just yesterday, the same thing, uh, playing with one another. They've got to have a nest nearby, and I'm, I'm thinking it'll be across the river because we had a, I noticed them there, not, not the lucetic, but uh, a red tail over across the river at a nest. Okay. And it could have been the female is the, the one that's not lucetic. I don't know, but. Yeah, yeah, and it's, I couldn't quite tell um, which one was larger than the other because the female would be larger. Is that correct? With, with yes. raptors? Yes. Yeah, and they were moving so quickly um, when I was taking these photos, I could never get a good sense if one was bigger than the other. Now in this photo, it kind of looks like the lucidic one, the one with with more white patches from a distance, like that one's bigger. But in other photos, it looked like the, the dark one was was quite a bit yeah. larger. But yeah, I think in the previous just, one, the, the tilt was a little differently. So that yeah. made the wings look broader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But just gorgeous birds. Yeah. And tricky to get photos of because they're so <laughs> they're so dynamic in the air. So I felt really lucky this day when I finally got some good shots of them. It was very exciting. I think I ran back to <laughs> ran back to the apartment and get to get these photos uploaded so I could take a closer look. And there they are, kind of diving behind the hill, yeah. the ridge up on the skyline there. So we're going to take a few look. We're going to take a look now at a few photos um, of that ridge. Uh, James and Buna and I took a little field trip over to the other side of the river on Sunday and um, had had a pretty good time of it. So we uh, we pulled down one of the canoes and crossed over the river. Now you might be wondering why James is on one side of the river and we're on the other. Um, he deposited <laughs> us. He deposited us on the east side and then realized that he forgot his hiking boots. So he uh, he had to go back and, and get his hiking boots. But um, Buna was very concerned for his, his welfare, as you can see. She's just a handsome dog. Isn't she? Yeah, really handsome. I assume that when you hiked that ridge, you found my horse trail, the, the switchbacks going up there. I, yeah, we sure did. We sure did. Pretty steep. Um, pretty steep, yeah but we were able to follow it. Um, the way back down, we, we kind of carved our own trail, um, which is <laughs> pretty classic James style. <laughs> if, you ever go for, if you ever go for a hike with James, um, he'll usually stop at the steepest hill and say, that looks good, let's go up here. <laughs> <laughs> so now this is, um, I guess this would be at the top of the, the main trail. There's kind of a, a large, wide one that, that yeah, carved up the power road. line road. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, exactly. So you get up there, and and you can start to get a nice overlook of the Bitterroot River and the ranch. And this, of course, is looking north towards Missoula. Missoula would just be over those hills in the background. And this was Buna's first official mountain hike. So uh, she was a pretty happy pup, I must say. Yeah. She yeah. really enjoyed it. This is a great place for dogs to live, I have to say. Sure is, yeah. Yep. So there's a little bit of a clearer shot looking north again. I well, believe and, those are and for those who are accustomed to our beautiful red dogwoods along the river, that's the beach at Dunrovin Ranch. Down on your lower left, you'll see those dogwood trees. And that is indeed our our beach right there. That's right. Yeah. So the camera is just off. Uh, the, the web camera is just off. You know, farther down, um, down river, um, or up river from that. Mm -hmm. Right, because the Bitterroot River, as I'm sure a lot of your viewers know, um, the Bitterroot River flows north, yep. which is rather interesting. 
And that little spit of beach that kind of is poking out in the lower left third, uh, you can see that stony beach there. That's where James and I often walk. Uh, so if you ever see us on the river cam and we start to head north through the, through the bushes, we're usually headed to that beach up there. And that beach, by the way, is the, the, the shallowest place to cross uh, if you go over across uh, from the end of that beach over to the right hand side. When the river was really, um, really high, I used to ride my horse down there and cross there because it's one of the shallowest parts of the river. Okay. I often see people walking on a trail on the other side yep. of the river. And I think mm -hmm. I can see a little bit of trail in this photo. Uh, but I've seen fishermen over there walking along and people with their dogs. So, mm -hmm. And now this is us getting up towards the top. I have to say, I, I, it didn't take me nearly, take us nearly as long to get up to the top of the ridge as I thought it would. Uh, it looks rather imposing from a distance, but once we started hiking up, we were, we were up there pretty quickly. Now, uh, in these rock spires, not this particular group, but farther to the east, you, when, when you got to the top there, you saw that there was a ridge and it went down and went back up. And mm -hmm. on the rock spires on the next ridge, uh, there has been a um, golden eagle nest for some years. And you do have to be careful with Buna and golden eagles. Um, I had a dog about Buna's size. His name was Jake. And I was horseback riding up there one year. And uh, the dog got too close to the golden eagle's nest. And um, I was too far away to um, command the dog, unfortunately. And the eagle attacked it. Um, wow. And it rolled down this hill that you just hiked up, rolled, just rolled and rolled. And I thought, oh, my goodness. Uh -oh. Yeah, bad news for the dog. <laughs> um, but, um, and I couldn't gallop there because it's way too steep to gallop downhill. So I hurried as quickly as I could, but the dog, you know, he recovered. He had some marks on him, but he was fine. <laughs> oh yeah, it was God. pretty exciting. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that would Golden Eagles can pick up a coyote. So, oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll have to, we'll have to craft some kind of defensive wear for Buna to ward them off so we can still take her on yeah. hikes. <laughs> well, I started carrying a whistle with me and I, and I trained Jake because he was a runner and I trained him to come at my whistle so that if I saw things like that, I could get him back, you know? Okay, and we're, we're talking about your dog, Jake, right? Not your son. <laughs> my dog. Yeah, you know, my, my son changed his name to Jake, and I didn't name my dog after my son or my son after my dog. My son named himself Jake after our dog. <laughs> that's, that's very Indiana Jones of him. I think so. <laughs> and then there were these beautiful little flowers up on the mountaintop, which Caught me by surprise because I I haven't seen any flowers down below, but here were these gorgeous little delicate things growing up there. I think those are forget me nots, are they not? I have no idea what they are. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the the um, I'll have to look it up. But they they come in blue and they come in pinkish and they are Alaska's um, flower. Oh, okay. So here are those rocks that are pretty classic on that horizon up above. So this was just a shot I took of the rocks from down below. And now you can see, here's a shot from the river cam that yeah. you captured, Suzanne, of yeah. when we were hiking up there. That's a nice little silhouette of Buna. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see there, there they are on the right-hand side, and then there's Buna standing on the right hand. Right. And then there's James and I. I've got my camera in my right hand. That's what I'm holding. And Buna's off on the left there. If you can see her. And then that's that's one of the rocks up top there. So I believe that's the one on the left. If I go back here, Buna's standing on the right hand rock. And then down here, this is the foot, this is the rock on the left. And then this is a view from that rock. This is looking south down the Bitterroot Valley. So those are the Bitterroot Mountains we're looking at on the, on the right-hand side. 
Yeah. And that is one happy mountain pup. <laughs> Look at that smile. <laughs> Another great photo. I love the coloring. She fits right in. She sure does. Yeah. And this was her after the hike. So she was pretty tuckered out. Yeah, I just looked up forget-me-nots on my phone, and those are forget-me-nots, pink okay. forget-me-nots. Oh, my okay. goodness. Look at her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Home at last. A one fire <laughs> puppy. That's great. Yeah. yeah. That's the best way to be a puppy, you know? That's, that's the best way. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And she loves getting in that river. I mean, you can see that wet belly. She just loves it, so. She's getting, she goes deeper and deeper every time we get in. Has she been swimming yet? No, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Well, wait till, you, wait till the two of you get into inner tubes and float down rivers. She'll get the hang of it. Yeah. Yeah. But she, she seemed okay in the canoe. She seemed all right crossing over. She was very, she's a very curious dog. She's not, not very fearful of much. She's more interested to see what's going to happen next. So. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so that's that's the end of our slideshow. And there's James up on the ridge waving down to all of you below. So um, thank you all for joining in. I think we're right at about 30 minutes here. So um, yeah, I've had a lot of fun exploring the ranch during springtime and taking photos. And I, I plan on taking more and sharing them with y'all. Well, thank you, Kate. Thank you for doing this and for uh, sharing your photos. It's, you know, it's a wonderful... Uh, thing to get to know a small piece of property well. I mean, it becomes part mm -hmm. of you and you really start to understand it and, and its ebb and flow and the changes over the years. It's very rewarding, I think. Yes, it is indeed. And and now that we have Harriet back, hopefully we can get some good shots of, of her and, and uh, Hal and their new family when that comes yes. along. In fact, I'll, let's tell people what we've been talking about. Now, some of them will remember that several years ago, we put um, a platform on top of the roof of the barn so people could get close with their cameras. So maybe that's something we'll have to do this year, Kate, so you can get up there with your camera. I think that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> Terrific. Well, thanks, everybody, for coming. We really enjoyed it. And thank you, Kate, so much for your photography and for your wonderful um, skill at capturing the birds and looking up who they are and what they are and, and sharing them with us. Yeah, thank you, Suzanne. Okay. Bye to you all. Bye, everyone. <laughs>